Hello and welcome to Out and About Art, your PGTV source for all things art in Pope County. I'm your host, Yasmeen Ali. If you love going outside to visit public art, then you already know that Pope County has no shortage of stunning, magnificent murals adorning its many buildings. Whether you're in Lakeland, Haines City, or Winter Haven, local business owners and community redevelopment agencies have made it their mission to beautify residential neighborhoods. Now Mulberry can add its name to the list. The Mulberry Murals Initiative currently has four murals in place in Spence Park and on State Road 37. I got the chance to speak with Lewis Holstein, the city program director who developed the initiative, and the three exceptionally talented artists who created murals so far. Let's take a look. Studies have shown that when art is made for the public, we, there is a sense of pride that happens. And so I really wanted to instill that in Mulberry. I love Mulberry and I, I know there's a lot of people that love Mulberry that live here. And so we wanted to try, start beautifying these parks and these places with murals. And then what we see is a kind of domino effect of residents and business owners also taking pride um, in their properties. So my heart, my biggest heart is art for all that no matter what your socioeconomic background, no matter what you know, your past, where you come from, that you can have access to quality art. We put out a call to artists all over the area, the local area, via our Facebook and social media channels, and wanted to build a database of artists, which we're actually still collecting the information from artists that are interested in being a part of the murals. And then what we do is we connect them with business owners or ourselves as a city. We've um, commissioned several, uh, several pieces so we will connect them based on style and price range and so right now we're just building that directory. So under the Mulberry Murals Initiative we have four murals so far. One of them being a community mural that was done at our Harvest Festival last year. Uh, this year we're going to be adding a fifth during our Harvest Festival, another community mural. Out of those four, um, th we have three artists that have completed them. Uh, the first, um, Ernest Craft, completed the one on um, Highway 37. It is the landscape. It has that Florida Highwayman feel to it. And then we have a more abstract piece, full of color, vibrancy and life. And that is done by Sheila Burgos, um, and that's at Spence Park. She also did the uh, community mural at Spence Park on our pool, uh, like our pool building. And uh, that is just an ode to Mulberry, uh, the literal Mulberry fruit. And then also uh, it says, we love Mulberry, uh, or I love Mulberry. The last and more, most recent is um, done by Taryn Edmondson. She's a local artist right here in Mulberry and she did mosquito wings that you can stand in front of. We've seen the trend of angel wings or bird wings and we felt that uh, mosquitoes are very prevalent here in Mulberry and we as residents know that. So we wanted to highlight that and, um, and, and do that. So she, she put the mosquito wings on there as well as a beautiful quote um, from a recent Tony Award winner that's just an inspiring piece of, um, of art. My name is Sheila Burgos. I'm originally from Puerto Rico, but I live in Winter Park since like five years ago. My style is like abstract, expressive. Uh, I paint it very vibrant colors usually because I'm from the Caribbean and that's, even though I try to paint more softly, it's not, it's not gonna happen. So I started painting this one because uh, when I did the solo show, one of the paintings that I had over there was a very large painting. It was very colorful and abstract. That's, that one was the one that the kids loved the most. And when I was invited to do the, I call it the abstract house, I, I was inspired by, by that piece. So I started painting it and then a couple of kids came around. They also painted and it's, it was more like a collaboration between the community and my art piece. And then I did another one that is before you entered the pool. Uh, I painted the outlines and that everybody came along and painted the complete piece. This one is called Inside My World. It's like what you can find inside my head. A mixture of emotions, energy, color, uh, all that comes from my upbringing my cultural background and my memories. In my culture, because I come from the Caribbean, we are very, we like to party. We're very happy people. So usually bright colors identifies us. I wanted to do a piece that f reflected that. 
uh, not necessary in a traditional way because uh, I love to paint in an expressive way because I like to get outside the lines, uh, break their creative rules and uh, play with my inner child, most of all. When I was painting this, a couple of persons approached me and they told me, oh, I wish I could paint, I wish I can be an artist. And all I can say is everybody is an artist, everybody is creative. There's no right or wrong to do art. In the beginning of times, people painted with, uh, with the soil, with the earth, you know, just get your hands dirty and, and create. There's no limitations. My name is Ernest Craft III. I'm from Lakeland, Florida. I guess my art career started when I was very young. Um, I've always loved to color. Um, my mom taught me how to color. I have to give her that credit. And, um, and painting got, came to be a source of, of income for me when I was homeless. I was uh, homeless at a point in my life where I needed extra income and I would paint for friends and family. My, my inspiration is the Howardman, Florida artists that were basically homeless and making their way up and down the highway painting and I, um, I was blessed to be able to come across some of their paintings and from that point on I was addicted. I was hooked on um, painting like those guys um, because I seen the freedom you know, and the, um, the beauty that they had into it. Just being a native Floridian uh, is uh, my inspiration for the wall and the colors of just waking up every morning, looking at the beautiful skies, listening to the birds, um, and, and the, uh, I'm a fisherman, so I love the outdoors as far as that goes. We did a sketch first. Um, uh, we, we, we submitted a couple of sketches, a couple of prototypes, and from that we scaled it from um, a piece of wood that I painted on to this huge wall. Um, I did a little sketching, but most of it is just freehanded. Art has always been a release uh, for me. Uh, anytime I'm frustrated, um, I tend to go in the garage or uh, draw or paint. It's very therapeutic. Um, I would recommend it to anyone. Um, everybody's an artist. You know, everybody has some sort of creativity within them. And I think that you should put it out, pull, pull it out in those times that you really need it, you know, in those dark times of, of whatever someone might have. But art has definitely been there for me um, as a savior. Come out and, and view the mural, you know, and, and, and uh, come out and enjoy all the murals and be creative, you know, be, be creative for yourself. Um, not for no one else, but just for yourself to relieve pressures and stress. Polk County is a, one of the best places in the world to live, period. Uh, and just the, the artists, the craftsmanship that is hosted here in Polk County is amazing. So uh, hopefully that, you know, the city and the, the county can bring all of us out and um, we can uh, showcase our talent. Hey, my name's Taryn Edmondson, and I've been an artist for, I don't know, ever since I can remember. I was born and raised in Hawaii, and I think just the community that I was around, and of course the beauty of it that I was around really just made me want to like put it down onto paper or whatever I could find. Coming to Florida, we first moved to Winter Haven, and then me and my husband moved over to Lakeland and Mulberry area, and then just the community that's in Mulberry, we've like really, really loved it. I mean, we both moved over here for jobs, but it's just turned into so much more. The friends and family that I made, I'm just so, so grateful, I guess is what I could say. A lot of people talk about other cities like Portland or something being so creative, but they don't realize like the creativity that's in just like even the smallest of places. Um, and people like Lewis are really helping that, you know, putting a magnifying glass over that and it's really great to see. So, and then to be a part of it is just like mind blowing to me because I never would have pictured myself doing any of this, you know. Lewis wanted to do the mosquito wings, mostly turning negative things into positive. So just like the mosquito, like if you ever think that you're not enough to make an impact on something, you've never been in a dark room with mosquito. You know, everybody's like, oh, the mosquitoes a mulberry will carry you away. It's always like a negative thing. There's a lot of research looking at just, I kind of like to go on rabbit trails of everything, but all the photos of it and just kind of piecing them all together, all the ones that I found. Cause there's a lot out there, <laughs> it was pretty cool. But whenever we looked it up, you know, I was looking for like reference photos. It's amazing, like 
the way that God has designed mosquito wings. I mean, like they're mosquito wings, you know, but they're beautiful and they're so intricate. And there was a lot of detail into them that I didn't even notice. But I think that's the whole thing is like taking time to notice things like that, whether it's in nature or down the street, you know, taking time to see beauty and everything, I guess. I've always went with the thought that like, I want to make beautiful things, even if nobody else cares. I want to make them and make them for me. And then if somebody happens to love what you're doing, then so be it. But don't try to fit a mold or I spent so much wasted time trying to be like other people or like, let me try what these people are doing. Just stay true to yourself. That sounds really cheesy, but that's what you need to do is just stay true to yourself. And that's when I think you'll really, really shine. And then as long as you surround yourself with positive people who are uplifting and encouraging you, separating you yourself from the ones who aren't, I think that's a big part of it too. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing the community mural in October at the Harvest Festival, so that'll be really exciting to do. Yeah, everybody can come be a part of that. Polk County is already really good at like supporting local businesses or local artists, and so that's just a part of it is coming and, you know, whether they're interactive or not, just to come and support them by sharing it and just experiencing it up close in person, I think it's really good. For more information on future events and calls to artists, you can follow the City of Mulberry on Facebook or visit www.cityofmulberryfl.org slash city hyphen programs. Our latest artist spotlight features gorgeous, outstanding portrait work. Ron Malone takes inspiration from people he meets and tells stories using vibrant watercolor painting. In addition to working on portraits for several hours a day, he's recently opened a new gallery in Lakeland called The Mark which is aimed at helping artists to bring out their inner creativity. Here's a look at the artwork of Ron Malone. Uh, my name is Ron Malone. I live in Bartow, Florida. Uh, I'm an artist and I do watercolor painting. It's challenging, but it offers the most opportunity to express different techniques. Uh, there's just so many things you can learn that watercolor uh, media brings to you and use. And I like the vibrant colors of watercolor. I try to paint at least four to six hours a day. And uh, sometimes that's in the morning, afternoon, and if it's the end of the day, I'll, I'll start late at night just because I enjoy it. Most of my subjects come from people I see. Um, I've gone to the park a couple times and just observed people watching, asked them if I could uh, take their photograph. So most of it was just people I meet. I've painted pictures of dogs. My wife is a dog lover, so I've painted a portrait of her and the dog. So it's usually uh, people I like or people I find interesting. I've done a few uh, flowers or a landscape, things like that, but it just doesn't it doesn't tell a story. I kind of like to tell a story or have a, something I'm trying to express. Uh, if there's no story behind it, I don't get into the painting. I just don't. When I'm painting, I really get into the person uh, who I'm painting. I imagine I make up stories in my mind about what they're doing and what they're thinking. But it's kind of fun to, to see uh, you look and study their eyes, their expression. And what I'm thinking is, can I capture that? You can make one little mistake on a painting and it will totally change the expression. Just a very small, just the angle of an eye uh, can change the expression. So I'm always thinking uh, about, you know, the subject matter. Uh, and that's a lot of fun. I'm thinking about, also about, <laughs> I make notes while I'm painting. I will think of things that, like I'm out of yellow, uh, lemon yellow. That was yesterday, I made a little note during it. I, if I don't do it now, I'll forget. I need to get some lemon yellow. The most difficult part, I would say, on, uh, is stopping. My problem is I don't know when to stop. When the painting is done, I'll, I'll still work on it and fiddle with it. So what happens is I overpaint and ruin the painting because I could have stopped four hours ago, it had been perfect. To overcome that problem, uh, what I do is I put a little timer next to me it's my uh, iPhone, I just set it for an hour. When it goes off, I stop, I get up and move back from the painting, at least 10 to 15 feet, and just look at it. Uh, it's totally changed my process, and I think I've addressed uh, at least a lot of that problem because 
what I decide is, you know what? I, I was gonna work on the face longer. It's done, you know, it's done, it's fine. Leave it alone. I, I find myself talking to myself, Ron, leave it alone. So it helps. There's all kinds of people, different expressions, different economies, different uh, backgrounds. But uh, one thing that's for sure, they're all interesting. And they all bring their own type of beauty. Uh, I have had people say, wow, that's the, your colors are bright and it just so, uh, it just says so much about the person. They're colorful as well. You're, you're getting it, you're close. And there are those who um, look at it and say, you know, uh, look at the technique. Uh, that's good. Uh, if they learn something, if they're a watercolor painter and they learn a technique or say, how did you do that? I'm glad to share it with them. Uh, so there's all the aspects of, uh, of what they might learn or what they might gain from it. Uh, and once in a while I'll uh, go to a show where there's a painting in there and I'll just, no one knows who, especially the ones that are out of state, they don't know who I am. And I'll just act like I'm looking at the painting next to it and just see what they say about it. And you really get some interesting um, comments that I get a big kick out of. Um, we opened the mark. First off, MARC stands for Mar <laughs> Meraki Artist Resource Center. Uh, Meraki is a Greek word, Greek word uh, meaning uh, bringing out the inner self, the inner creative self, who you are inside, the very being of who you are. Sharon and I uh, together were business partners who started this, and the idea, what we want to do is, is help artists to bring out their inner self, to be creative. Uh, there's plenty of places that are providing uh, workshops, training, all kinds of things. But what we're interested in is um, customizing the approach, helping them, uh, and uh, making it fun. Uh, if it's not fun, I don't think you should be doing it. Uh, we focus not only on the workshops, the training, we also focus on just getting to know people, also networking, getting artists to talk to other artists. Um, because I think we all have that creativity, that uh, inner ability to create, and creativity comes out in a lot of different ways. The best example I get, I get the kick out of when someone looks at it and they'll say, well, I can't even draw a stick figure. And uh, what I say, I can't either. Uh, I don't really like stick figures. Uh, but what the point of trying to make is they can't draw, I can't do anything, uh, which is not true. What they can't do is something is in the back of their heads of what they should be doing. They could think it should look a certain way. It doesn't. It doesn't have to. It's going to be their way. Uh, some may say it looks childish. And uh, uh, right now I can take you to a lot of uh, famous art that uh, with famous artists that looks very childish. But it's just awesome. It came from came from within. So I think in expressing yourself, um, there's a benefit that it feels good. I think it brings a balance to you. Uh, I think it's also comforting and relaxing. I've never seen uh, art grow so much in a community as much as I've seen here over the last five years. I think people come, uh, when they first get here, they think there isn't any, they check it out and they find out, wow. Uh, we have the, the Lakeland Art Guild, probably one of the, the top organizations in the area for developing local artists made of volunteers. Uh, you have the uh, Polk Museum, now connected to the college, uh, has given it kind of a boost because of that connection. Polk County offers so much for a developing artist, is what I like. If you're developing, there's just so many resources and classes that you could take advantage of uh, that would really uh, be fun and bring out the inner uh, uh, Meraki. You know, I think that's what I, I think would happen. The Meraki Artist Resource Center is located at 2607 Orleans Avenue in Lakeland. For more information on classes or to get in touch with Ron, visit www.the-mark.com. Our last segment this month will have you laughing out loud in your seat. Swan City Improv entertains audiences by using their own brand of live improvised comedy 
that's fun and edgy for adults, but safe for all ages. I was able to attend their first ever made up musical event, which took place late last month at Lakeland Live. Stay tuned to learn about the talented performers of Swan City Improv and watch as they completely improvise an hour long musical about the Titanic. Uh, so my name is Nate Fleming and what Swan City Improv is, is it's improvised comedy. We make a bunch of plays up on the spot, kind of small versions of plays. So there's a team of us, we get together, we hop on stage, and we play games based off of the audience's suggestions right there on the spot. So all the comedy is made up and it's completely and totally family friendly and clean. So there's nothing about it that will offend the young ones. We actually find out who the youngest kid in the audience is and we try to play to them. I've been doing improv for most of my life, but I've always had the dream of, of having something that's kind of a home that I've helped to build. February of 2017, I made a call to Lakeland Live that's run by Shane Lawler. It's an amazing nonprofit theater. And he said, yeah, I'll love to have you guys put a show up. So in April of 2017, me and a bunch of my friends all put one show up that was wildly successful. Shane asked us to repeat it and keep doing it every month. And so we've been doing it once a month since April 2017. But it all kind of started from me trying to get shows for a bunch of people here who are super talented at improv. The beauty of improv is, is that you don't know what you're doing, but you get up and you do it anyway. And that's kind of the MO of my entire life is I've, I've no clue what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, but I continue to do it anyway. I find something new to do, find some new way of responding to the, the world around me. As it gives me things, I give things back. And it has a lot of lessons that really help in actual life. And then just the rush and the thrill of being on stage and making something up on the spot. The audience member has given you a suggestion and you take it and you make it the coolest thing in the world that everybody gets to laugh at. That feeling is, is like a high that you, you can't really match with any other type of comedy. Yes, yes it is. What do you see, Julie? I'm seeing birds. But they're shaped like the man from Waikiki. What? Ooh, I'm just seeing The most difficult part is remembering that you were a child once and trying to get rid of all those inhibitions of being an adult of, I can't say that, or there's no way that people would believe that right next to me right now is a laser tiger that I'm petting. Like that's, it's careful because it shoots lasers. Be, be careful of that. That whole idea is, is really weird for some people, but for us who play on stage, our whole goal is we reduce the inhibitions in our mind as adults to remind us that we're just children playing again and we just become children playing on stage and whatever we say is, is right and true. Just like if you were playing with a, a four-year-old or a five-year-old, if they say, hey, let's go play with the tigers over there at the playground, you're not going to say, look, kid, you're an idiot. First off, no tigers over there. Second, it's not really that fun of a playground. You're not going to crush their dreams. You're going to say, let's do it. Oh my gosh, there's one over there. Let's go catch it. And you run and you play. And that sense of play and that enjoyment is what we're trying to capture on stage. So for the hour that you see the show, you get to have fun playing with tigers on a playground with us. This is the first time we've ever created a full-on musical where the intent is one hour, we make a musical from start to finish. So it's, uh, it's the first one, and tomorrow we will find out if it is the last one. That's uh, the only way to know is by doing it. We have a pianist who's named Anthony Riley, and he is phenomenal on the piano, one of the best improvisers we have on the team, actually, because he's improvising what to play while we're singing, kind of both of us working together. In every show, we always have some sort of musical element because we have some people on the team who are musically trained, whether it be musical theater, musical background, or they play instruments themselves. So it's just comfortable for us to hop into music. And I've noticed that the team as a whole is extremely good at doing musical related stuff. So I said, why not just throw caution to the wind and let's make up an entire musical. They all said, yeah, let's do it. Got rid of our nerves and we just decided if music is the thing that people like the most that we do, we'll make one whole show out of it and see what happens. That's kind of the thought process of it scares us. Let's give it a go. Oh, 
Um, if cheerleading is a sport, then yeah, comedy is definitely an art form. So my name is Brent Adriano, and I am one of the team members of Swan City Improv. And I've been a part of Swan City Improv for about um, two years now, a little over two years since we started basically the first show. I've always loved performing on stage and, and performing in plays and stuff and musicals, but um, I'm super lazy, so I don't like memorizing lines. So I love how I can just show up and make it up as I go, which is one of the biggest parts of improv. It really works well with laziness and making people smile um, with the gift of just making things up. Um, one of the biggest, especially I had this when I first started, is um, wow, I can't think that fast, or how do I think that fast? How do you think that fast? And it's not about thinking fast at all. It's about kind of taking it step by step and just risking it as you go and not having, because when you think ahead, you're plotting ahead and that's not improv. It's just feeling it out and reacting to what's happening around you with your partners and then just um, coming up with it on the spot rather than just trying to think every little step of the way. So I like that um, when I started doing it, I was like, I don't have to think fast. I just have to listen to what my partner's saying and then react as a normal human being would react. So anyone can do it because everyone that I know thinks um, and is able to improv in everyday life. So One of the first steps you actually want to do is make eye contact with your scene partner so you're both on the same page. And it's weird because when you're on a team with someone and you practice together, you start to be able to read each other's minds. So you want to start by making sure you're both on the same page. Maybe start adjusting your body language to say, to say I'm coming in as this type of character. Um, and when you come, don't come in with preconceived thoughts, but just come in, make a choice. Um, and if your partner speaks first and makes a choice, you support that choice and you make your choices with them. If you make the choice, you trust your partner will support you and listen to you. And really, uh, if you're bad at listening, you're going to get good at listening through improv because if you miss anything they might say, um, everyone's going to laugh at you and you don't want that or your partner is going to get mad at you after the show and be like, you made me look like a fool, but it's all about listening um, and supporting the person and responding. And so um, the process is really latching on to emotion at the beginning of the scene and then just fighting for that emotion and for that want you might have as a character and just listening and then um, supporting each other in that scene. So we have three different levels of classes, level one, level two, and level three, because we're super inventive when it comes to naming our classes. Uh, totally kidding. Uh, I need to think of cool names for them because I don't have any yet. But essentially level one is an introduction. It's, it's me teaching you, hey, you can do this, you're great at it, you're wonderful, keep playing, giving you the guidelines to improv and the rules that I play by. Level two, we just go a little bit deeper. We make everything a little bit more advanced. We hop into long form improv, short form, go over theories and ideas behind improv. And then level three, you guys put yourselves a team together. You get four rehearsals and four shows. So you get to put up shows as a team, feeling what it's like to be in front of an audience and kind of building your own fan base. But the idea is that people from all walks of life, whether you just want to take an improv class to help with business, or you want to take one because you want to play, or because you want to gain confidence, whatever it is you want to use improv for, the idea is you can hop into one of our classes and we will gladly help you figure that out with us. Uh, the best way to sign up for classes and the only way is to register online at swancityimprov.com slash classes. Our next term starts September 8th, 2019. After that, the classes go on a hiatus because of the holiday season and attendance will be a little spotty until January of next year. But the next round of classes, level one, level two, and level three, they're open and ready for you to register right now. For more information on Swan City Improv's upcoming shows, classes, and workshops, you can follow them on Facebook or visit www.swancityimprov.com. Well, that's all I have for this month, but there's always plenty going on within the Pope County art scene. Stay tuned for a list of art events in your area. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time for more art out and about.